I'm dying about the Panera lemonade tweet. Listen, I kind of whiffed on that one. I'm just going to say, because there was a tweet. It, it just beat me. I got beaten in the meritocracy. The tweet was, hey, boss, they're roasting us over serving bread with a side of bread. What should we do? CEO of Panera Bread. How about a lemonade that kills you? That's a much better tweet than mine, which was, they're going to ban the Panera lemonade and some 16-year-old with jerry cans is going to make 15 grand selling it contraband on WhatsApp. Mine's okay. Did you see the, the TikTok of the girl, or the woman, who said that she works inside of a Panera Bread? So she has been drinking like four to five uh, charged lemonades a day. And then she did the math. She was like, I never drink caffeine. And then I did the math and it was the equivalent of like 26 shots of espresso. She was fine. Well, like, listen, she wasn't dead, but I'm going to I'm going to play a little clip of her. And then you tell me if she seems fine. I have learned something that should be illegal. 100 percent should be illegal. So and it has to do with this drink. Let me give me a second. So I at Panera. Oh, I cannot get I cannot get myself straight. I work at Panera. No, I don't. I work, I work in a Panera. Yeah, she seems fine. <laughs> that was 14 seconds. She is beginning to sound like a, a rap god. It's not on fast forward. She's just, she's just spitting, man. I work in a Panera when I'm doing my work because I don't want to pay for a co-working space, but working at home makes me want to dig my own grave because I'm alone and I don't have human interaction. So I work at my local Panera, understand? And when I'm at my local Panera, they have free refills, free refills. This is the mango yuzu, mango yuzu citrus. They, they gotta get rid of this lemonade, man. I'm all about some degree of personal responsibility, but we as a society are not able to handle this rocket fuel just being out there in a dispenser. All I want in life now is that lemonade. I think I could take like a small. I've never been to a Panera. Have you seen the nine to five girl? I know I'm probably just being so dramatic and annoying, but this is my first job, like my first nine to five job after college and I'm in person and I'm commuting in the city and it takes me fucking forever to get there. There's no way I'm going to be able to afford living in the city right now. So that's off the table, like fucking duh. If I was able to walk to work and it would be fine, but I'm not. So it literally takes me like I leave here, like I get on the train at 730 and I don't get home till like 615 earliest. And then like I don't have time to do anything. I don't I want to shower eat my dinner and go to sleep. I don't have time or energy to cook my dinner either. Like, I don't have energy to work out. Like, that's out the window. Like, I'm so upset. Oh, my God. Nothing to do with my job at all. But just, like, the 9 to 5 schedule in general is crazy. Being in the office 9 to 5, like, if it was remote, you get off at 5 and you're home and everything's fine. But, like, I'm not home. It takes me long to get home. And, like, like, people that drive to the office, like, it doesn't, you don't get off at 5, and I know it could be worse, I know I could be working longer, but, like, I literally get off, it's pitch black, like, I don't have energy, how do you have friends, like, how do you have time to, like, meet, like, a guy, I don't know, like, how do you have time for, like, dating, like, I don't have time for anything, and I'm, like, so stressed out, and I'm also getting my period, so that's why I'm all emotional, but, like, am I so dramatic? It's fine. Yeah, and it's pissing me off because everybody that's like 38 years old, all these old asses that are my age are like Gen Z finds out what it is like to work a real job and is sad. And I'm like, you're fucking duh, dumbass. Yeah, if you work nine to five and it takes you 90 minutes to commute to your job, 90 minutes to commute home, it fucking sucks ass, idiot. You complain about it all the time. What generation do you think invented Kathy or Kathy? Or ack Mondays. Er, my freaking boss emailed me. Er, I can't handle this. Ack. I saw someone my age that was like, I don't recall millennials complaining about adulting when they entered the workforce. And I'm like, what are you talking about? This is all they did. That's all we. Because it it's a shock to the system, man. When you go from like your fourth year of college, you got like nine hours of class a week, four days of day drinking. And then all of a sudden, they're like, to get to the office at 9, you got to wake up at like 6.15. It's fucked up, man. It's a shock to the system. 
I don't know. Like everybody seems to agree that it sucks, but it's like illegal to say that it sucks. It's like a sign of weakness. Well, a hundred years ago, grandpa had to fucking wake up on the farm at age 12 and walk his decrepit ass down to the coal mine. Okay. That sucks too, man. It's not a badge of pride. They were like, suck it up. I know. Like why? But why? So you can complain. It sucks, man. I'm here to tell you if you're like 21, don't believe the 40 year olds who were like, nobody was complaining. Which generation do you think pushed this song to the top of the charts? Work sucks. I know. She left me roses by the stairs. Surprises like we know she cares. That's not how it goes, but you get the idea. Take this job and shove it. I don't want to work. Just want to bang on my drum all day. I get home at seven. Yeah. And I take myself out a nice cold beer. Oh, we seem to be wondering why there's nothing going down here. Which generation pushed this song to the top of the charts? How bizarre, how bizarre. <laughs> that wouldn't be mine, but I was there singing along with it. NL, there's a preschool based Am I the Asshole that you would definitely love. Can I, I, I hate to send you out on an errand librarian. Can I get a link for that? Okay, hang on. It's not out of disrespect for the game. I'm just trying to, uh, I, the link has been posted apparently. There it is. <clears throat> this is what it's all about anyway. Am I the asshole for complaining about the signs at my daughter's preschool? My daughter, age three, just started preschool and has a teacher that is very honest, sometimes coming off as a bit rude. I had to stop allowing my daughter to bring her toys to school because they always get lost and this teacher is no help when it comes to finding them. She brought a little Lego creation that she wanted to show her friends and didn't have it at the end of the day. I asked the teacher where it was she didn't know. I asked her to look for it. She said there's no way she'd be able to tell our Legos from theirs that my daughter would not be getting her Legos back. I'm, that one, I'm just going to say, I would be mad on my, on my daughter's behalf, but at the same time, like, they got other stuff to do at the preschool. Like, they got to actually take care of the kids. They got to teach the kids. They might have to feed the kids, take them to the potty, etc. So it's, any, I, I always feel bad when my daughter's like, I'm not going to daycare unless I'm bringing, like, an extra variable with me. So, so far, I don't think that the, anyone's, no one's done anything crazy wrong, but that's not illustrative of like a bad teacher. Another time she went to school with a sticker on her shirt. She was crying when I picked her up because the sticker was gone. I asked the teacher to look for it. She said, I will not be tearing apart my classroom and playground to find a sticker that fell off four hours ago. Okay, they, totally fair. Other kids have gone home with my daughter's jackets and we've had to wait a week one time to get it back. Now that's annoying, but still, I mean, there's a lot of kids there. Lately, there's been two notices taped to the window that I am certain were written by this teacher. The first one says, your child is not the only one with a pink puffer jacket or Moana water bottle. Please label your child's belongings to ensure they go home with the right person. And the second one says, we understand caring for a sick child is difficult, but 12 of them isn't any easier. Please keep your child home if they have these symptoms. In my opinion, there's no reason for these notes to be this snarky and obviously aimed at very specific parents. I complained to the director about this teacher's conduct and the notice is on the window, but nothing has come of it. My husband thinks I'm overreacting. Am I the asshole for complaining? Yes, that's that's an easy one. That, and it doesn't seem fake either. Like that, that seems real, but yeah, they are definitely the asshole. A, spe a sticker on the shirt is psychotic. The idea that... You would because stickers were not made to be affixed to, you know, cotton. They fall off like, you know, a band-aid in a swimming pool. The idea that you would send your kid with a sticker on their shirt and then like eight hours later, the sticker would still be there or the preschool teacher would have like Terminator vision and be like, oh yeah, the sticker fell off in the sandbox. Let me go back. Like, that's crazy. That's, that's not realistic. That's not reasonable. Comments, please. Well, you know, it's... It's Reddit, so they're anti-child. So they're gonna restate what I said, but they're gonna be like, your kid should be taken away from you or something like that. You guys see that Egyptian sarcophagus that got opened? And there's like a bunch of pictures of people praying to what appears to be an enormous Marge Simpson on the inside. That can't be real, right? This has gotta be a, a hoax. Librarian, hook us up on this one. It has to be fake. Tall lady with large blue hair. She even has a green dress on. 
Didn't you popularize if it looks bad, it's real though? Yeah, but this looks good. Like, it looks too good to be real. But the aliens were too real to be fake. No, they were, they looked too shitty to be fake. Because if they, it, it all, this looks real, which means it's a hoax. Because the people who hoaxed it made it look real. The aliens are real because they look like shit. Nobody would perpetuate a hoax with those decrepit ass aliens. They would be like, no one's going to believe us. Aliens are probably crying hearing you call them decrepit. Let them come get my ass in like 400,000 years when this signal finally gets to their decrepit ass planet. You know how big the universe is? You talk shit about me, I could just like, I could fly to you. I could be there in like five hours or something like that. You're gonna be like, don't talk shit about an alien? Bro, the universe is like so humongous big. You could talk shit about aliens that lived on like Saturn. It would take 35 years for you to face the consequences of your actions, okay? Did you guys hear that Hassan flew to Big Chungus, Ohio to pour a Panera charged lemonade down the original Skibbity toilet? <clears throat> Did you guys hear that Hassan flew to Big Chungus, Ohio to pour a Panera Charge lemonade down the original Skibbity toilet? Why did he read it twice? I didn't read it once. That sentence came from my brain. How ironic, by the way, Hassan Minaj got outed for making up the stories in his stand-up. Then it turns out the hit piece that outed him made up that he made it up. It's fabrications all the way down. I don't know what to trust in this post-truth era, man. He came with the damn receipts. We do a We're not gonna play half hour lies of P. That's just uh, that's just throwing it into the ether. Sap is come on. Don't be ridiculous. Top on Rainbow Six. Hang on. I'm testing a hypothesis. I find you entertaining. Keep it up. Is this, are you like an eternal? Are you a celestial or something? Have I been blessed by the favor of divinity? Even dropped an at Northern Lion in it so it would show up in the front of my mind. What the hell? AI chatbot. Hey, I saw a streamer tweet. I, be I They said the conspiracy theory that I 100% believe is that companies have made AI chatbots to go into Twitch streams to ask them to play games. And I, I, the second I read it, I said, that motherfucker is on to something. Because there's somebody in chat, and I'm sorry, I, I will know your name when I see it, but I'm, I don't remember it at the moment. Every day for three years, you've been asking me to play Moving Out, which is so bizarre. It's like a... A, a indie multiplayer game where you like grab this shit from inside the house, put it on your car and then like drive and try not to have it fall off. I've been seeing you post that shit for three straight years. No human being is that kind of tenacity to see another streamer play like one hour of a, of a game, okay? Even Scath Eyes isn't even here anymore and he gets uh, like so much dopamine from typing Northern Lion Harem every single time. I'm on to you. I don't know what company made that. I think it's Australian. They love AI there. And throwing a shrimp on the Barbie. Macros, back me up here. DL Guiga, you stay out of this one. They love AU. That's true. Who doesn't? She's a great K-pop artist. Slash user super lose 626. I'm just checking to see if you're ChatGPT. One time out from Mubot, long time ago, account created 2014, following for almost two years. Hop on Rainbow Six, man. No, nope, not at all. You are a normal person. Or are you, well, let's see. No famous Amos, no grandma. Damn, that armor has big, I'm not going to say the word, but you get the idea. Let's say big energy. Ryan, you got to play Rainbow Six again. It's popping. He should play Rainbow Six again. It's popping. Poop waffles. 
What's better, Costco or Sam's Club? I don't. I, I think you're a normal person who likes Rainbow Six. I don't think you are a Chat GPT bot created by Ubisoft. I'm giving you've passed the Turing test. Now, if you're a robot, go ahead and take over the world. I do not think that Ubisoft would make a robot that says, "Damn, that armor has big zitties." <laughs> If they did, then go ahead and hit me with the Oscar Isaac, okay? Tweets? I didn't see that many tweets. I, the Twitter algorithm still got me all fucked up. It thinks I really care about Britney Spears dragging Justin Timberlake. And it thinks I give a shit at all about not only the game Spider-Man 2, but like the reaction to Spider-Man 2. Which doesn't make some like I used to see tweets that were like, check out what you can do in Spider-Man 2. And now I'm seeing tweets that are like, check out what you can't do in Spider-Man 2. And then recently it's gone like, why would this idiot even try to do this in Spider-Man 2? Like, it's just, uh, they got me all wrong, man. They think I love Spider-Man. Hit not interested? No, fuck you, Elon Musk. Take two of these right here. Move fast and break stuff. Come up with a good... Make your algorithm work. If you want to serve me algorithmic content I'm interested in, make the algorithm work. I'm not going to click not interested. Don't you have like access to all of my user data? Figure it out. Engaging in the not interested button makes the algorithm better. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm not going to do it. Fuck that robot. That robot is my enemy. I'm not going to spend my time to make the robot better at getting me to spend more time on the website. It can figure it out for itself. Heart and soul. It's got a lot of heart and soul. I don't know the rest of the words. But it's got a pretty good bass line, pretty good bass line, heart and soul. My wife is streaming Mahjong Monday's Pog. I'll send you right over to her stream. Hope you have a great rest of your Monday night. I'll see you tomorrow for Dome Keeper. Boop,